when I'm climbing, you feel loads of different emotions at the same time. Excitement, nerves, adrenaline is the biggest one. It's such a crazy thing to do is climb and then fall off and have a rope catch you. What if it doesn't catch you? What if something goes wrong when you fall off? My favourite thing about rock climbing is that it's always different. You can always climb different routes and you can always work up to different things. Climbing, because it's so unique, there's so many different types of people who climb, there's different types of climbs that are set. You'd feel happy and in your own little bubble. When I was growing up, I didn't really understand why anyone would think I was different to them. I was just a normal kid, playing with other normal children. I don't really shout about it all the time, it's just something that I have to deal with. When I was born, I was born with no left arm, shoulder blade or collarbone. I was quite a sick child, I had collapsed lungs and a twisted pelvis and twisted spine. I was always in and out of the hospital, getting checkups, getting treatments, because nobody really knows why I was born this way. offered some strange strap on shoulder things that are never really comfortable. I wouldn't really be me if I had a prosthetic arm because people know me as the person with one arm and shouldn't really care about anything. To just then make myself able bodied would kind of defeat the point of what I'm all about. I started climbing when I was 10. There was a teacher going around asking if people would like to sign up for the climbing club. It was the first time they'd ever done that and I was like, no, I don't really want to do it. But he put my name down anyway. My teacher pushed me a lot because he knew I always enjoyed sports. Because this was so unique and different and it was the first time they'd done it. So he pushed me because he wanted me just to give it a try, just to see if I could do it. When I first started, I had no idea about the climbing. I'd never seen it done before. It would be quite tough for the instructors as well because they hadn't taught anyone with one arm before. My type of climbing is para climbing, where everybody has a different disability. People with one arm, people with one leg, people who are blind, wheelchair users. When I was about 12, I did a first paraclimbing competition and then they announced that they were going to make a British paraclimbing team. I got onto it when I was 16. I've been on ever since, competing around the world. I am currently vice captain. A lot of the job role is just looking out for other team members, making sure they're okay with first time competitions. Last year, I came first overall in Europe and then third in the world. I train about five days a week, sometimes more. There's a lot more to climbing than just climbing. There's push-ups, pull-ups, doing a lot of weights, working on your core, working on your finger strength and your flexibility. There's also doing the actual climbing, of just getting into the habit of teaching yourself and perfecting your technique.
my mum never really bared with me because I had one arm. She would make me tie my own laces. She'd make me learn how to ride a bike. She wouldn't push me just because I've got a disability. She provided me with some help occasionally, but it was very rare because she knew that at some point in my life I'd have to become independent. I work at Red Goat Climbing Wall in York. I help out at the kids clubs and teaching um, kids aged from 7 to about 16 how to climb. It's really interesting because a lot of them have no idea what they're doing or they don't like getting two feet off the wall. It's a good learning curve. In the future I plan to teach other disabled kids. It's quite hard to try something new when you're little and you've got a disability. The climbing community is full of life and everyone's just always happy, everyone's really psyched all the time to climb and motivate each other to do a route. Most of the time people are really friendly, people get quite curious and you can see them looking and they don't know whether to ask because they might be offended. Sometimes you can get people who are a bit single-minded, they don't really think that people with a disability can do much. They are quite shocked when they see disabled people climbing or doing something that's challenging. It can be hard to find motivation when you're climbing because it takes a lot of your energy and a lot of your strength and it can be really hard but you've got to think about the reasons why you climb in the first place when training gets on top of you and you miss a couple of days when you shouldn't have there's always that guilt in the back of your mind that you should be doing something after the first year of being on the team it kind of got a bit too much and i really struggled with doing college work and training at the same time. Once you kind of get over that initial shock of having to do everything, you find places to put training because if you want something bad enough, you're going to make time for it. To think that I've actually done it and I've gone and competed in international competitions is quite surreal really. You can't really go through life finding every little thing insulting. You kind of have to keep an open mind. You are going to come across people like that at some point in your life. So the best thing to do is to just don't care. Don't care what anybody says or what anyone thinks because at the end of the day, you should be your own person. And if you're not, then there's something wrong. <laughs>